Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I've got a full tank review for you of Patton the Tank. This will be a free gift given to everyone simply for logging in over the next week, starting from tomorrow morning, and clicking the Claim Tank button that will be in the bottom right hand corner of your garage. Now, if you're struggling with this or you're struggling with getting your well deserved reward, you can go through to the Notification Center, and there should be option to claim all of the goodies if you have missed them. However, I'm sure a lot of you are questioning why would Wargaming be giving us a free tier 9 tank? Well, obviously it's to try and get as many people to log into World of Tanks as possible and to try to get people to come back and play the game. But outside of that cynical view, I'm here to let you know whether this is a gift that is worth playing. So firstly, Patton the Tank has already been in the game for pretty much eight years in the form of the M48 A2 T54 E2 T123 E6, which is a tier 10 American reward medium tank. Now, I incorrectly thought that this was a Clan Wars reward tank as I've been seeing them on the battlefield a fair bit recently from Super Testers and now it makes perfect sense considering Patton the tank is identical to this vehicle with regards to its armor layout. So Wargaming have taken a tier 10 that's been in the game for eight years and put it down to tier 9. Now obviously when you move a tank down from tier 10 to tier 9 you have to make the statistics worse. Um, however as I'm going to show you uh, with the analysis here, Wargaming might have gone too far. So firstly Patton the tank has horrible damage per minute. 2051 is awful for any tier 9 medium tank. It is 30% worse than the Patton and I'm actually throwing in a Renegade into the mix here which is a tier 8 American Heavy. I know it's a different tier and it's a different class but this might give you an idea of just how bad the Patton tank is if it can't compete with a lower tiered premium heavy. The penetration on this vehicle at 242 is good, much better than the Patton, and the gold rounds on this tank have 300 millimeters of penetration that put the Patton's APCR rounds of 265 to shame. This vehicle has a 120 millimeter main armament, which might be useful for when you want to overmatch 35 millimeter plates compared to the Patton. However, this 120 only hits for 400 compared to the Patton's 105, which hits for 390, and only 10% better alpha damage than the Renegade, which is hitting for 360. One of my least favorite things about this tank is how limited the ammunition loadout is, which means that later on in the battle, you'll be running out of AP or heat rounds, depending on how good of a matchmaking you're in. So now let's look at the gun handling. 2.5 seconds aim time, same as the Renegade, really not good for a tier 9 medium. 0.4 accuracy, the worst in this comparison, even worse than the Patton or the Renegade, and those aren't the tank's strong points. The dispersion when moving is just unbelievably horrendous. 0.22 double the patterns and the turret 0.12 50% worse than the patterns and it's much worse than the renegade uh which is a tank that i feel i need to use vertical stabilizers on uh, the news gets even worse when we take a look at the mobility uh, for the Patton tank. But just before that, I'd like to highlight that this tank, like all of the vehicles in this comparison, has really good gun depression of 10 degrees, which makes it very flexible on a ridgeline. The mobility of this vehicle, horrendous. 40 forwards, 17 backwards. This is slower than a Renegade on hard terrain. Although, considering how bad the Renegade's ground resistances are, this vehicle will be faster on medium and soft. However, the Tech Tree M46 Patton is faster on all terrains compared to this vehicle, even with worse ground resistances, because this thing's power to weight ratio hits worse than a tier 8 premium heavy tank combine this with turret traverse that's barely any better than the renegade one degree tank traverse that's one degree better than the renegade and this thing is sluggish like a tier 8 premium heavy the pattern runs rings round the pattern tank or pattern the tank this is getting confusing with the naming structure of wargaming right now so the armor on this vehicle the hull armor is way better than the pattern both at the front and also at the side and the turret armor looks decent as well however Patton the tank has a horrible weak point on top with only 76 millimeters of armor. This means that large caliber high explosive rounds will be able to penetrate this from your tier 10 tank destroyers or alternatively, hopefully not your, your BZ-176s you're going to be meeting. The strength of this vehicle is that its side armor is very well angled, which means that it can over angle its hull, come around a corner and bait your opponents into hopefully shooting. However, be careful that it only has 38 millimeters of armor all along this lower part, which will get overmatched. And there's a big old section of 25 millimeters of armor that you can easily overmatch as well. All in all, this thing, it doesn't have terrible armor for a tier 9, but it's definitely not great. And considering that some parts of the armor you only need like 100 millimeters to be able to get through from the front, it's definitely not one of the specialities of this vehicle. 
Combine this with a standard 1,700 hit points, the same as the pattern, and you don't really have excessive durability to go with all of the other aspects of this vehicle that are just truly horrendous. Combine this with horrible camera rating, both when you're moving and with your, when you're stationary, and also, for some reason, Wargaming have made this vehicle blind and only given it 380 meters view range, which means that it's got 30 meters base worse than the pattern, which never has to use coated optics, and 20 meters base worse than a premium tank that is one tier lower than it. <sighs> Things really aren't looking so good for this vehicle so far. So what about the crew for Patton the tank? Well, it uses the same crew loadout as your M48A5 Patton. So if you like that tank, like me, then the crew will work perfectly in this vehicle. I would recommend to have a zero skill crew for your loader because the loader is also the radio operator and they will have to have situational awareness in addition to brothers in arms repairs concealment and that's before you've taken things like intuition or safe stowage on this vehicle all of the other crew members if this is the first time you're playing an american medium don't really have to be zero skill but obviously the more that you would take the the more opportunities that you have crew skills i would recommend on the commander brothers in arms repairs recon concealment all the rest are bells and whistles for your gunner, brothers in arms, repair, concealment snapshot, dead eye designated target, probably worth investing a zero skill there. And on your driver, brothers in arms, repairs, concealment, off road driving, smooth ride. And then if you're not using a uh, fire extinguisher, things like preventative maintenance will come in handy. So, equipment wise on this vehicle, it's so slow that I feel that I have to use a turbo vents and a gun rammer on this thing. However, let me clarify if you play this thing without vertical stabilizers, the gun feels so horrendous. And so, if you can get away without using a turbo on this tank, you probably want to use vert stabs or maybe even drop the vents to use vert stabs. But if you drop the vents, even if you're using a premium consumable with, in my opinion, the correct field mod loadout, your view range is going to drop down to below 420. And that is just absolutely horrendous for a medium tank. My second build on this vehicle, I'm going to be using coated optics inside the vision slot. I cannot remember a tier 9 tank which I was forced to do that on because the view range is just so abysmal. So now let's take a look at the field mods. I would personally recommend that you use module durability increase because this thing seems to get ammo racked quite a lot. Then I'd improve the horrendous accuracy that this vehicle has. The next one, most medium tanks I'd improve the camo. However, for this one, considering its camo is awful anyway and you really want to be playing this thing mostly against the heavies i'd recommend the reverse speed and the track repair time and just well your concealment is already bad don't worry about it i'd recommend taking the scouting slot so you can put your coated optics or your vents in there depending on which build you're using and for the final field mod it's a bit of a tricky one i personally think that you should lower the view range to be able to improve the top speed and just say well I'm not going to be very good at scouting anyway unless I take the coated optics. However, if you absolutely, utterly must have good view range, even without taking coated optics, you might want to go the other way. But then, boy, are you going to have to take a turbo. Otherwise, you are going to be horrendously slow. So I think that's quite enough jibber-jabber. Let's take Patton the Tank out onto the battlefield. All right, so here we go. Patton the Tank. What is my ideology for this vehicle? Well, the weird thing is, is it pretty much looks like a heavy tank, right? It is not a medium, it's huge. It's just as big as all of the other heavies on the battlefield. It's got horrible camo, mediocre mobility. Where is the best place to play this vehicle? Well, in my opinion, the best place to play this tank will be fighting heavy vehicles. And while pff, its statistics aren't exactly <laughs> great against heavy vehicles, at least then you're not gonna end up on medium flanks against faster vehicles which don't have weak points on top of their tank that are going to be able to outspot you. And then you end up in a position where you're unable to progress afterwards because you just don't have the view range to be able to dig out all the campy tank destroyers. So, look, this vehicle, it's horrendous. There's no other way to say it. It's statistically one of the worst tanks tier for tier in the game. What I'm trying to do in today's review is to help you be able to either, I don't know, get your ace tank up, God forbid try and 3 mark this vehicle, but I reckon its requirements are going to be incredibly low. Or maybe somebody who just wants to play this tank because you really like the idea that it has Patton the Tank written on the barrel. Uh, one thing I'd like to highlight as we're waltzing into position here is that this vehicle does actually come with a, a special style, but the special style is just like a generic Christmas style and you could put it on all of your vehicles. And it's nothing to do with Patton the Tank. Uh, and the fact that there's actually a 
pattern the tank written on the barrel means that you could use any style you want. This is the default credit one that I, I use for a lot of my reviews to show you that the pattern the tank will stay on the barrel. But you could choose something that contrasts quite well with the, the black writing on the barrel if you're interested. Now this is just the ideal scenario for Pat and the Tank. I'm side scraping against players who don't seem to know about how American big side armor works. And my weak point is on the top right of this vehicle. And so this vehicle is quite proficient for side scraping against right hand corners. And then just as you can see, we can go and brawl lower tier heavies. Now, let me clarify, if I was playing against tier 9 heavies, they might have the penetration or the caliber to be able to go through my side armor a lot more. Or, I just wouldn't be able to make such good trades. Because 400 alpha damage for a tier 9 medium, it's not bad. Not bad at all. And these heavies, they just don't have super high alpha. But as we can see, even standard rounds from tier 8 heavies are easily able to go through the upper hull of this vehicle. And now I am ammo racked, and I have lost all of my hit points. So it looked like it was going oh so well for this vehicle. Now I'm ammo racked and down to 492 hit points and just thinking about how can I manage to get anything in this game. So I'm hoping this VK is going to come out. They're not going to come and side scrape against me and I'm kind of happy that they aren't because if they do, I'd have to load gold and get lucky against the side of their vehicle. The T-32 fires. Oh, that gun handling and that penetration. Boys and girls, if I was playing an M103 right now, I'd have about 258 millimeters of penetration on my standard rounds. With this vehicle, the 242 means you just bounce way more than you would do with an M103. And also, the M103 has way better gun handling this vehicle. And it also fires, I believe, about 20% faster. There are going to be so many times in this replay where I feel as if I've had to over aim my shots because of just simply how bad the gun handling is. So again, consider using vertical stabilizers on this tank. The only issue is, is that what do you sacrifice to be able to gain those vertical stabilizers? Do you sacrifice the rate of fire with the gun rammer? Do you sacrifice the all-round capacity with the vents? Oh, sweet QB camo, by the way, Mr. IS-5. Shout out to you. Our jet was a pleasure to play with you, bud. Um, or do you sacrifice the turbo on this vehicle and drive around literally slower than a tier 8 heavy tank like the Renegade would? Oh my word, this is the kind of tank that I wish I could use five or six different pieces of equipment on. I would like all three that you see me using, the durability device, the vert stabs, uh, probably coated optics as well. Well, that's six already. And then, you know, for the scouty maps, drop one of those for a vision system. Um, whenever I find myself wanting to use a lot of different equipment on a vehicle, that is one of the most obvious things that tells me that a tank is underpowered. When I have to try and improve so many aspects about the vehicle to make the tank playable, that's where you know that Wargaming have put the vehicle in underpowered with regards to its statistics. And Pat and the tank is no exception to, to this measurement, so to say. It's just, it's really, what you're gonna see in this replay and what you're going to see in this review is just my pure frustration with the vehicle. Even when you get it into its ultimate situation where you're side scraping. Look at this aim time. Look at this gun handling. No kill for me. M103 takes it. The great irony that a better heavy tank at tier nine, just better in pretty much every single way than this vehicle. And no one thinks that the M103 is an overpowered tank. Just claims the kill. However, maybe we can get the standard beam. The IS-5 gets a good ram in. But no charity here, mate. Even if you are using the uh, the QB camo, I'm going to need all the kills I can get in this horrendous tier 9 medium tank. Alright, so we've dealt with the town. We drop back. There's a Centurion up here. Aiming, 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 aiming. Finally, we get a shot in. And we managed to track them as well, so hopefully my team is going to be able to make use of that. Nah, and I'm not spotting the Centurion, so unfortunately I'm not getting a lot of experience there. At least this vehicle's power to weight is not horrendous. Oh god. I'm really trying to find things to say that are good about this vehicle. And of course, the fact that it is free um, uh, for everyone is one of the best things about the vehicle. So, the UDES 14.5 says no cap, please. And I say, can we destroy them all? No cap? Question mark? I'm not begging for it, but I need every little bit of help that I can get in this tank. We're going to venture forwards for the E75. 
Huge reticle there. Luckily, the shell flies true. E75 turns their tank towards us. Are we going to be able to pull off a ricochet? Of course not. Of course we're not going to ricochet in this big old turkey of a tank. And oh, oh my word. Oh my word. That accuracy. That gun handling. Oh, pattern the tank. Pattern the tank. What has Wargaming done? done to you when they've dropped you down from tier 10. Okay, so round two. Now, uh, once again, in a top tier matchup, and we're playing on Cliff. I'm gonna go and try and take my American medium tank with its 10 degrees of gun depression into a position to try and outwork someone on a ridge line. And then you realize you've got a horrendous weak point on top of the vehicle. Boys and girls, you know you have a horrible weak point when a Kanonen Jagdpanzer can manage to shoot you in it without you being able to see the entirety. Well, any part of their vehicle. We were unable to be able to depress the gun over that ridge line. Woo wee. Um, yeah, look. Tanks like the Renegade also have weak points. That's that's for sure. The, the Renegade still works inside World of Tanks, even with its a, when it has a weak point. However, the reason why the Renegade works, even when it has a weak point, is that it has good damage per minute. And it has good gun handling. And it is faster than this vehicle. And it has better view range than this vehicle. And it, it is a tier 8. It's a tier 8. And it makes credits as well. So people don't care because they're going and playing it so they can farm credits. Now let me clarify. Pat and the tank will make you extra crew training. Which is nice. So let's say there's an event that's going on where there's five times experience. Which will be happening tomorrow uh, on the... On, in World of Tanks for, I think, the Christmas period, then it is a good opportunity to be able to take your American medium crew, put it in this vehicle, and just get your five times win of the day. That'll be some really nice crew training if you're that kind of player. And also, the free experience opportunity will be nice as well. However, I'm really scraping the barrel to try and find use cases for this vehicle. It truly is a horrendously underpowered vehicle. What miracle shot there to be able to go through the G saw, flying true and managing to deal pretty much a third of the hit points of damage there. Tier 8, British tank destroyer. Now, hopefully, one into the back of the Renegade as well. There you go. Good night, Mr. Renegade. Oh, the delicious irony of where a, a tier 9 medium tank ends up finishing off a better tier 8. I would honestly rather play the Renegade at tier 9. Well, maybe that's a bit of a stretch because this vehicle does have good penetration. Look, if I could if I could choose to either play the Renegade or this tank at tier eight, I would rather play the Renegade at tier eight because I honestly feel that the, the better armor, well, the same armor, but having the better mobility and the better rate of fire, the better damage per minute will be worth, and the better view range will be worth playing the Renegade instead of this. However, I will say that because of if, if I was to choose to play this tank or the Renegade at tier 9, I would probably still pick this one, purely because the Renegade's penetration won't do well with tier 9 matchmaking, which is one of the reasons why it is at tier 8. Bit of a weird thing to think that. I'd rather play the Renegade at tier 8 than this tank, even if this tank was tier 8, with the same stats, but I'd rather play this tank than the Renegade at tier 9, purely because of that penetration advantage. So, what you've seen so far this game is just a perfect example of Pat and the tank. You get into position on a ridge line, the tank disappoints you. You manage to brawl against a Centurion 7-1. It was a pretty okay result to be able to brawl against that tank. We managed to finish them off with some good support. And now you're going to find out that this vehicle has horrendous view range, horrendous accuracy, horrendous gun handling, and also it seems to be unlucky. Although maybe we did blind fire the Borsig there on the enemy team. Last time the Borsig was spotted, they were on just about half of their hit points. So if they get spotted, on much less than that, and hopefully we did manage to hit them. So, look, to be able to set this thing up to do well against the heavies, you've lowered your camo rating by 3%, which is ridiculous, considering this vehicle has one of the worst camos on any medium tank in the game. You've also lowered your view range, well, at least I have, to be able to gain any kind of speed on this vehicle to try and find any aspect, or any way to be able to love this tank. So now I've made my vehicle really bad in these kind of situations where a tank like the Renegade or the Patton would be good in this kind of a scenario. Decent range, decent view range, able to get the shots in. I take a penetrating shot from the TVP VTU, trying to get back as quick as I can. And even with the field mod to improve my reverse speed, I'm done. 
Ah. Uh, no, it, it's not, I guess, um, what am I saying? It is a terrible result. It's just such a terrible tank. I'm trying to highlight here that there's almost no way to set this vehicle up and not make yourself horrendous at some other area for when you're just trying to play the game. So one more go in Pat and the Tank. I was sitting up in this alcove waiting for maybe the enemies to push, but now that I see that we've got a big number of tanks here, the enemies aren't going to be pushing that position. And so it's time to take Pat and the Tank on the offensive against the enemy team. And luckily, with the turbo and with the field mod, the, the mobility on this vehicle, it is passable. And we're going to try and advance through the dip, use our 10 degrees of gun depression, and go on the assault. Luckily, our armor holds up against the Char Future 4. Now we're going to use a high explosive round to knock down this building to see if we can get a shot into the Leopard prototype. Unfortunately, the Leopard prototype isn't exposing themselves. We have an EBR duel going on that I really should be focused on right now, and I don't know why I'm focusing so much on this Leopard prototype when I had an opportunity to focus on that EBR. It's a bit of a misplay there by me. But in this kind of a, a the little stream, river, whatever we want to call it here, we're managing to flank the 277, which is what we want to do. We want to try and get behind our opponents, but also we're mindful that we do have this horrible weak point on top of the tank that I don't want to expose myself to pretty much everyone on all parts of the map. You see that I'm looking left, looking right, just thinking, whoa, I'm kind of in the, the middle of it all right now. But wow, look at this aim time, this gun handling. I feel like with this tank, whenever it does hit, you need to thank it. You almost need to thank Pat and the tank that it's actually allowed you to do any kind of damage. It's not, not gonna lie. Oh, unfortunately now we've got an E4 coming for us, this EBR. I guess he thought that I would focus on the E4 instead. He manages to put one shell into us, and now this is actually pretty good for us. We've got a turbo, so we're reasonably fast. This T124 doesn't have a fully traversable turret. I want him to just advance at me, and then I'm going to go around the ridge and try and get around his back. But he actually decides to fall back here. So I bounce a heat round off his weak point from above, quite surprised about that. I, I thought that would hit with 300 millimeters of pen. Just still worried about the Hori coming after us. Put in the next shell, which looked like it was an even worse shot than the previous one, but luckily this one does go in. And there's kind of a scenario, it's weak point versus weak point. Whose weak point is going to be the downfall? Uh, and it looks like the E4 just isn't really managing to catch my weak point as much as I'm managing to catch his. I mean, it's a little bit advantageous that his is sticking right up and mine's on the right-hand side of the vehicle. Because obviously if I'm on a ridge like this, then when I go up, if I'm tilting my tank slightly, then the weak point won't be so exposed. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that was a high explosive round penetrating my weak point on top of the tank. 1,082 damage. I, you, you couldn't script it really. Uh, I, I said uh, in my review, well, my little preview of this vehicle before I played it, and yeah, you can see I'm just, I'm trying to have any kind of fun I can have in this tank. <laughs> just shaking my head, actually in the game. Oh, oh man. Oh, it's just, oh, the aiming time, and you have to aim for three years at your opponents, and then they move and the shell misses. Oh, boys and girls, really, this thing is an absolute slug of the battlefield. Hopefully this one's going to go in. Hooray, good. But yeah, you really couldn't script it. Losing 1,100 hit points to a penetrating HE shell on a weak point. HE shells, he's got 90 millimeters of pen, and he's challenged that part of my armor. So good shot there from the against the 277. We get him to waste the shell. I'm asking the EBR for help, but the EBR is leaving. And the Centurion 71 shoots my weak point over the ridge line. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is Patton the tank. Um, I think this is the worst reward vehicle, arguably, tier for tier, uh, that we've had kind of at, at the high tiers, at least. At tier 9, tier 8, or, or tier 7. It is truly a horrendous vehicle, but it is a free tank. And so I must say thank you to Wargaming for giving everyone a free vehicle, which is a really nice gesture. However, there's there's something peculiar about this. And that is, I think Wargaming might have predicted uh, something, ladies and gents, boys and girls. And that is because Patton the tank is only worth a thousand credits as it stands if you sell it. Accordingly, for all of you out there who were hoping that Wargaming were going to give you a free tank and then you could sell it and make a quick 2 million credits, ugh, that's not going to be the case. So unless you want to sell this vehicle, 
and use the garage slot for something more important. Unfortunately, this thing is just going to uh, probably gather dust inside your garage. Now, look, I think it, it was important that Wargaming made this vehicle only worth a thousand credits because it does mean that they can give us things inside the garage that maybe some people will like, maybe some people won't like, without the ramifications of just giving millions of credits to all of the millions of players who play Worlds of Tanks, which will be literally trillions of credits into the World of Tanks economy. And so this does kind of give me hope that in the future, Wargaming will be giving us generous rewards towards the top tier to mark special occasions. However, I will say, Wargaming, that you could have made this one a little bit better in a few areas. Here's my thinking. Let's imagine a perfectly balanced tank has 100% statistics. This one has about 85% or 8 or 90% of, should we say, what a, a vehicle of its tier should be. Wargaming could have very easily have made it 95% of the statistics. It would have still been underpowered, but at least it would have been playable. In its current form, I wouldn't recommend anyone to invest any amount of time in this vehicle. You'd be better to play the pattern at tier 9, you'd be better to play the M103, you'd be better to play a Renegade if you do have that vehicle. You'd be better to play something like an AE Phase 1 if you've managed to get any of the Battle Pass tokens. This is a horrendous tank that sparks no joy for me on the battlefield, and I really do think it was a missed opportunity for Wargaming to still make it at least reasonably fun. They could have easily made this thing go at 45 or 50 kilometers an hour, easily given it at least 390 if not 400 meters view range. They could have easily given it incredible gun handling if it does have the statistics that it has, or decided to improve the accuracy or the rate of fire of this vehicle. There were so many areas that Wargaming could have addressed before they released it, and it feels as if they're intentionally giving away a horrendous tank at tier 9, maybe to uh, flesh out the matchmaker a little bit. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you're watching this tank review as it's released, I would thoroughly recommend you play World of Tanks tomorrow. I'd recommend that you play tier 9, and I'd probably recommend you play some of your better medium tanks, because if you get matched up against the pattern tanks, this should be some super easy farming for all of you. So I guess in a way, everyone's happy. All of the high tier players get to farm all of the casuals coming back to World of Tanks and playing their brand new pattern the tank. All of the casuals are happy that they've managed to get something completely for free, the easiest way to be able to get the tank. And Wargaming are happy because more people will be jumping into the garage and taking a look at all of the festive things going on. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for Pattern the Tank, my full tank review. Really hope this one was useful for you. If it was, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know what you think about Pattern the Tank and Wargaming giving it as a gift. Do you think it's insulting that the tank's so bad? Or do you think that you shouldn't look a gift horse in the mouth? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.